Hey everybody, and welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it's Friday, which means I get to bring to you yet another obscurity in literature. And I guess depending on which side of the Atlantic pond you live on, this might be more obscure to some than others. But this is The Rise and Fall of the Trigan Empire, Volume 1, uh, by Mike Butterworth, who I'll admit I wasn't familiar with, but Don Lawrence, just looking at this artwork, I was like, I know that. I know those style of faces. And yeah, uh, which is weird because for like almost my entire life, finding Don Lawrence work in English speaking collected editions in the United States is not an easy task. If I ever had any editions of Storm, I would love to share them with you guys. And heck, if you know where to find some of the modern updated ones in English, I might add, because I know there have been uh, republished ones out there in Scandinavia land. Um, yeah, it's it's not easy to find, especially in the States. So Don Lawrence really made his name in early British comics in the 60s. Um, obviously grew to more international prominence with his work on Storm. That's where I'm familiar with him. Uh, we're not going to do a whole biographical thing, but just the fact that this is the first book published in this series... And I want to say that we're going to be three, and I could be wrong on that because I haven't checked online or any of that stuff, but I'd forgotten. I actually had this on the shelf. I was looking for something else. I was like, oh, wow, I'd always meant to talk about this, and now I have to recall half the stories involved in it, which is not going to be an easy feat, but that's okay because if you're interested, we'll let you figure that part out. And like I said, this is just the first book. It's clocking in at nearly 300 pages of very... Well done, detailed, chunky pages at that. Uh, you're, you're definitely going to get a lot of bang for your buck. And I don't even know what the cover price is. Uh, it's 20 pounds, which isn't the worst. And I don't know what the current exchange rate was. But I feel like I got it for a good deal, at least in the U.S. I'm going to try to see if there's any kind of an Amazon link. And I'll give that to you guys if you're interested. But yeah, so the introduction... I thought, oh, it's by Liam Sharp. I thought there was a Neil Gaiman one. Gaiman. I think it's the blurb on the cover, but yeah. Uh, so right away, you can see the bulk of this book was mid-60s style sci-fi. And I will admit, I have a real soft spot for that kind of work. Uh, it You know, that retro futurism, I, I've always been a big fan. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me as well th with this book is it's very wordy. And it was a bit of a, I don't know, having to get my brain readjusted to this style of book, you know, with modern comics being a lot more visual and letting the pictures do the talking rather than so many text boxes. We've got, you know, third person narration, we've got speech bubbles, and we've just got really killer art. The earlier stuff doesn't look anywhere as nice as the later parts of the book. And I mean, that's just, you know, that progression that most artists go through. But one thing that always sticks with me behind, besides some of the, the stereotypical caricatures uh, and, and racial characteristics that unfortunately permeate works of this era, and I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, was, I guess, taken for granted, but it's here. Not too much, but it is. Uh, everything has this almost, like, biblical aspect to it, and... You can see it a lot in their clothing. I mean, yeah, we've got all kinds of crazy sci-fi spaceships and armor and weapons, but everything has this kind of classical ancient look to it. And we're not on Earth anyway, so it's not like it had to be. Anyway, our heroes eventually end up fighting off the bad guys and get into lots of misadventures there's the usual monsters, all kinds of funky sci-fi equipment at various points. And then they end up building the Dragon Empire. And then we have various heroes as the stories continue that are related to the main cast as the generations come and go. Again, my favorite thing, besides all the funky tech and spaceships, are all the monsters. Could there have been more monsters? I wish. 
One of the other nice things is there's quite a lot of changes in the locales and environments. One of the things I don't think we ever see is an actual map of the Empire itself. Which is funny, because you'd think for all the various undiscovered countries and fringes of the Empire they end up on, they got horses on their planet, you'd think that somebody would have been charting all this stuff out. And again, you can see, uh, to me, again, a, a very biblical, Roman-esque look to everything. And I'm sure that was intentional. I do like how they have what probably would have been house ads or something replaced with one of the coins from the Empire. Of course, you got the wise know-it-all guy here that, you know, controls everything and is always there with all the answers for our heroes. War with Heracon. So again, you're getting a lot of story here. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of different characters that come and go throughout. Some of it does feel a bit repetitious at times. But, you know, I, I want to say that's more due to maybe just the, the style of these serializations. In that, you know, the stories only had a few pages per issue of the magazines that these were included in so you really kind of had to follow along and there's not a whole lot of recaps either some cool sky battles going on there i know later on there were a bunch of neat monsters i'm more used to lawrence's storm stuff so for me this is kind of a bit of a downgrade because i mean the storm comics obviously came much later but were just crazier in their I don't know. I, I almost want to say, like, in their European comicness sense of, like, you know, post Metal Herlon, everything was just kind of crazy and funky. Just for the sake of being crazy and funky, which I was absolutely all for. Yeah, I would love to get a hold of some of the Storm stuff. But there's no denying that Don Lawrence was a incredibly talented artist and considering all these pages almost 300 something pages of purely painted artwork is quite impressive and in such a short span of time i mean we're talking like a good maybe three years worth of stories in just this book alone come for the space age diplomacy stay for the monsters right that's what i'm here for but honestly it's just it's a neat book um like i said you're gonna get a lot of stories you're gonna get a lot of money's worth you're gonna get a lot of book and if this is something that interests you be sure to check it out so with that said then this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon Bye bye